the dirty little secret of inkjet paper. So what is an inkjet paper? Is a paper that has an inkjet coating applied to it. A coating that has been engineered to give you really precise dot placement, that's been designed to give you a very sharp image, to give you maximum color gamut possible from a particular ink set, to give you really great DMAX. It's a paper that's been formulated for inkjet printing. And all that sounds great, doesn't it? Well, there is no free lunch. The problem with inkjet paper, and this is always been the problem with inkjet paper, especially as they become more sophisticated, is that inkjet paper has an Achilles heel. An Achilles heel that, that inkjet coating is really the least stable part of your inkjet photographic printing process. The paper base that that coating is on is probably incredibly stable and incredibly archival. The inks that you work with, whether they're pigment or dye, are actually quite stable. It's the coating that makes inkjet paper fragile. It's the coating that cuts into the lifespan of how long a particular inkjet print will last. And the reason why is that coating is like a sponge. It's designed to suck in and hold that pigment or that dye. But it also, as a result of that, is susceptible, far more so than an uncoated paper, to things like acid to an environment that might be acidic. You know, acid-free is really important whenever you're mounting and finishing inkjet material. Airborne pollutants, ground-level ozone, all that kind of stuff really attacks inkjet coating. Now, you see a lot of these websites that post, we've tested this paper and this ink, and we say it's gonna last two, 300 years. I never believe any of that crap. And the reason is there's far too much variability in our process as photographic artists that they cannot possibly take into account when doing those tests. I mean, the reality is a lot of people are stupid and they're gonna hang your work next to an outside door and they live in Montana where it's cold and hot, cold and hot during the winter. That's not great for paper. They're gonna hang it next to their bathroom door. So every time they open that door from taking a shower, all that moisture comes rushing out and hits your paper. They're gonna hang it over a radiator. They're gonna hang it in South Sun in Florida. All those type of things and the intensity of those type of things and the regularity of those type of things are things that are not taken into account in these tests. Additionally, if you ever notice on those tests, they'll say, okay, we have X printer and X ink, and now we're gonna try it on these five papers. Have you ever noticed how each paper has a different archival life? What does that tell you? It tells you that the printer is this and the ink is this, and it's the coatings on the paper. All the papers are coated is that really is that Achilles heel for longevity. When you have ink being held in this very thin microscopic layer right near the surface of the paper, it looks really good, but it's fragile. When I work on a handmade paper like what's behind me, the ink is going into the paper and really becoming part of the paper. I had my friend Dan here in the studio today, and we were looking at a print of his that we made on a mate. And the difference between his image printed on an inkjet paper and an uncoated mate paper was night and day. One feels clinical and cold, and the other had a sense of emotion, a sense of depth, and it was, it was alive. And it was something that until you've really seen those two side by side, it's hard to really understand what a big difference it is. So early inkjet printers were dye-based. They weren't pigment-based. Pigment-based came in much later. And the big selling point for all the companies was that pigment was more archival than dye. Well, here we are, fade in, fade out now in 2023, dye-based materials have come a long ways. And a lot of the dyes that are being produced in printers are rated, now once again, I take that with a grain of salt, to 100 years. And a lot of printing companies are mixing the two together. They're mixing dye and pigment together and creating this hybriding system that I think is really fascinating. You're getting a huge color gamut with archival qualities that I feel are reasonable to expect from a work of art. So when we think about the word archival, the word archival has been used for two things, in my opinion, in the photography community. One, as a way to sell you a new printer and new ink set. You know, because every couple of years we hear, oh, this new printer has more archival inks than the previous printers. Maybe, maybe not. And does it really matter? 
And additionally, it's been used as a way to sort of drumbeat into all of us photographers that that's something that we should always be thinking about, about our work. How long is it going to last? Do you really think that when Basquiat was grabbing his spray paint can and going out and making work, that he gave a shit about how archival that spray paint was? Of course not. Do you think Pollock sat around and goes, gee, I wonder if these paint splatters and these different paints that I'm mixing are going to last? Are they going to have some sort of chemical reaction that I'm not aware of? Of course he didn't. He was making a work of art. The reality is in 2023, the vast majority of all the printers and inks that you work with are plenty archival right out the door. 50, 60, 70, 100 years. That's really where the analog world was forever. This idea that gelatin silver prints in the dark room, in the black and white dark room, were somehow this archival pinnacle is crazy. They aren't. Just go to any historic archive and look at gelatin silver prints from the 20s and 30s. A lot of them are not aging so well. And that's because of best practices. Was everything double fixed, selenium toned and washed properly? Probably not. And as a result, a lot of prints have, you know, started to become brittle. A lot of prints have turned yellow. And so I don't look at gelatin silver as some archival, you know, palace on the hill. Um, in the traditional days of color printing, you know, RA4 was not that stable. Even Fuji Crystal Archive paper is rated by the Library of Congress is only rated for 45 years. I remember when the, uh, the, the Eastman House brought in this uh, Cindy Sherman artwork. It was really beautiful. I love Cindy Sherman's work. Really big, big color print. And they paid like a crazy sum of money, $30,000, $40,000. It was a lot of money for it, especially back then. And one of the complaints was, yeah, it's an RA4 print, though. It's not going to last that long. In 40, 50 years, this print is going to fade in a way that the vast majority of the Eastman's archives would not. You know, platinum, palladium, yeah, okay, that's really beautiful. Carbo, yeah, that's really beautiful. Fresson, yeah, that's really beautiful. I love all those processes. But they make up a tiny, tiny, tiny portion of what we as photographers do. The vast majority of photographers today who are making prints are making inkjet prints. And the reality is the inkjet materials that are made today in 2023 should satisfy everybody's need in terms of that word archival. And most importantly, buy the paper and work with the materials that again, speak to you as an artist. Don't buy into the hype of this inkjet paper is better than this one. The differences between inkjet papers today are very little. And remember, the paper coating is really the Achilles heel. Thank you very much for listening. I can't wait to hear your thoughts and have a great day.